You know, by now you all would have had a new video that was going to be a guide on the dredge. It was funny. The script was completed and I was just about to start recording and editing, and then Behavior decided to bust my kneecaps once again with a dredge update. I guess the video will have to wait another month to come out. With all that being said, it has been a while since I made a video covering the changes for a PTB, mostly because most of the changes were already covered by bigger content creators out there. I was initially going to just ignore this patch as well, but considering I now have over 3k subscribers, I suppose hiding away in my cave of isolation is no longer a good enough excuse to stop making videos for over a month. You may notice I am not going to do much editing for this video, and that's because I want to get the information out sooner rather than later. Additionally, I was planning on covering the whole patch, with Castlevania being the upcoming chapter, but due to the sheer size of everything, I decided to split the video into two parts. That way it's more digestible to watch, and I can actually upload everything at a reasonable time, and not two months after it finally came out. Firstly, let's cover the changes to the killers, starting of course with Dredge. I am going to be honest, I was never expecting behavior to make adjustments to Dredge in the modern age. Because for the most part, Dredge's balance is pretty solid. His mobility is one of the strongest of the teleport focus killers, his anti-loop is one of the easiest and is incredibly strong to utilize, and Nightfall helps to eliminate most of his core flaws when it is active. All of that being said, the changes they did make to Dredge are really good. In particular, the adjustments to Dredge had the core focus of implementing their most popular add-ons to be partially base. Boat Key, Malthinker's Skull, Automarian Writing, and Hattie's Calendar were the targeted add-ons, and since they all help to enhance what makes Dredge fun to play, it makes sense why Behavior decided to incorporate them into Dredge's kit. Overall, these four changes, in my opinion, are very good and welcome for Dredge. Additionally, the sound adjustments are another welcome addition, as Dredge was one of the many killers in the game who did not know what the term subtle meant when they were released. This simply helps Dredge out at utilizing stealth play, and helps Dredge to be able to hear anything outside of the comp players and their symphony of cries during Nightfall. Of all the changes to Dredge though, I find the only problematic one has to be his increase in movement speed when holding out the Reign of Darkness. This move speed not only affects him when he is preparing to teleport, but also his ability to utilize his anti-loop. And for most who have faced a Dredge, who can utilize the Remnant smartly, it is very oppressive to face. The change is small, so it won't break Dredge and turn them into a balanced nightmare like Blight and Nurse, but it has the chance to be a lot more oppressive to face than one may think. Regardless of all these adjustments to Dredge though, I think they're not going to increase in strength. At least not extremely. The biggest flaw that Dredge currently has in their kit is funnily enough how the teleport functions, as on maps like Midwitch, Dredge is really really good but then you play on Coldwind, and you begin to see the cracks. These changes that Behavior have made are very much going to make Dredge more powerful in the situations where they are good, but they will do very little about the situations where their power is made to be anti-loop only. Next we have Doctor, and I have to admit these changes are very interesting. They take a similar approach to his first bundle of changes all the way back in the All Things Wicked patch, and this is where I need to talk about an important factor when it comes to Doctor as a character, something Behavior knows all too well. I think many of the changes Behavior have made were carefully crafted in helping Doctor feel nicer to play, but were also designed to be small over time changes. This is because Doctor is a character with a design that many new players struggle to understand, and for veteran players it can be extremely tricky to tackle. Doctor is a killer who can flip extremely fast when balanced improperly, so it makes sense that Behavior are taking a more surgical approach to his balance. With that being said, the first batch of changes for Doctor were clever, and the second bundle of changes follow in a similar vein. They are targeting his static blast this time around, and overall, they are very good! I like the cooldown when landing the blast, and the increased move speed is luckily only affecting the AoE, so we don't get a Vecna's Mage Hand incident again. Then there's the missed cooldown reduction on the blast, and this is rather intriguing, because it helps return an element of Doctor that has aged poorly in his kit, and that is information. Doctor before his rework was the initial intel gathering killer before Skull Merchant appeared, and showed us why Doctor got reworked in the first place. 
Intel Gathering as a killer concept is very cool on paper, but when it is placed as the main focus, it drains the other elements of the killer's kits, and it is incredibly annoying to tackle with for the opposing side. It is why Dr. Back before the rework was the DC King, and his rework helped to place power into his anti-loop and lethality, but drained a significant amount from the Intel Gathering element. Over time though, with the introduction of new Intel perks and other killers who have better forms of tracking, Doctor's Blast has become a little outdated. Both the cooldown changes help to bring him up to speed to match up to the other competition, while still keeping Doctor from turning into an electrically charged human radar. Lastly, for killer changes, we got Nemesis. And these are the smallest changes of the three killers. Before going over the one change that have stressed many, let's talk about the mutation change, as they have made Marvin's blood partially base when entering tier 2. I really like this change. As someone who plays Nemesis, I always found myself constantly going for Marvin's blood, not only to speed up getting into tier 2, but because Marvin's blood is literally the only good add-on to run. Well, there's slightly a lie, as the second change now puts Licker's tongue on the table, as Nemesis decided to give Nemesis a longer hinder to his tentacle slam. There was already a hinder on the tentacle, but it was so short, most players never realized it, and now behavior are making it a whole two seconds. Luckily, it's only when a survivor is infected, and not when injured by the tentacle, but it's clear why behavior decided to increase the hinder. It's a design decision to help Nemesis to catch the first survivor and reach mutation tier 2 faster. And combined with Marvin's blood being made base, I think it's overall a lovely bundle of changes to help Nemesis with his early game. Plus it helps to mock Clown as a killer even more, and I'm sure most players will take that as a win. <laughs> now we finally get to perks, and to sum it all up, the changes are very simple, but very welcome. Let's discuss the trap perks first. These include Blast Mine, Wiretap, Flashbang, Chemical Trap, and the most recent of the bunch, Mirrored Illusion. How Behavior designed the trap archetype of perks back in the day was that they required more generated progress depending on the strength of the perk's trap effect, but this was later changed to be a universal 50% for all of the trap-based perks. This change was, in my opinion, a poor decision, as the perk's strengths all could vary depending on the situation and it was very evident that some were be much better than others. Luckily, this has now changed, as Flashbang, Wiretap, and Blast Mine now require 40% gen progress, and Chemical Trap and Mirrored Illusion only require 20%, but have had their duration reduced to 60 seconds. Overall, it's a very smart change that allows the stronger trap perks to be kept in line, while allowing the more situational perks like Chemical Trap and Mirrored Illusion a lot more chances to be utilized. Plus, with the reduction in duration to the two perks, they can now be utilized a lot more often than compared to before. Now for the last three perks, they only got cooldown reductions, but for the most part, they are very lovely. Dance With Me being 20 seconds now is a change I think most players agree should have been made like five years ago, but I am glad that it has finally happened. The perk being reduced to 20 seconds allows it to be paired much more nicely, with lithe and quick and quiet. Plus, considering it's only hiding scratch marks, it's a fair cooldown compared to other on-demand stealth options. I think Dance With Me will see a little more play compared to before, but nothing too major. Deception, in a similar case, got its cooldown reduced to 20 seconds as well, but unlike Dance With Me, I think Deception won't see a higher pick rate. The perk has always been designed for the more niche audience that love to bamboozle the killer player with unique perks, and the fact that I got a cooldown reduction helps those players, but not really anyone else. Lastly, we got Diversion. And I got a reduction to the time required to build up the pebble to 20 seconds from 30. What more can I say other than it's clear behavior wants more pebble? The change helps to build up the pebble faster, but at the same time keeps it reasonable and not allows survivors to spam it constantly. I would have preferred if the perk also charged while in chase to help when facing stealth killers, but the change we did get is good too. Overall, I don't see any flaws with what they decide to do here. The changes behavior I've been making recently when it comes to perks for DBD have honestly been a pleasant surprise for me. Because compared to about like three years ago, we were lucky to have two perks being updated for the year. Nowadays, we are seeing a long list of perks gaining cooldown reductions, reworks, tune-ups, and so much more. 
I really like that we are finally looking at these perks and helping to make the more goofy design perks more easily accessible for the players who do enjoy running them. It will not skyrocket their popularity or make them meta relevant, but it will make them more fun to run, and that is a big factor in helping perks becoming more popular. Now we do have a few other changes for, with the PTB, but for the most part they require playtesting, as reading does not tell the full story when it comes to how it will fare with gameplay. I will say, the Prestige update is a very nice addition, as seeing a full stack of Prestige 100 things for a new player was very frightening, but for a veteran is literal target practice. I know players will complain about it, since Prestige is to show how much time you spend on leveling a character, ha ha ha, but you still see it on the endgame screen. If the killer can live with that decision when it was first made, I'm sure it won't be the end of the world. As for the scratch mark update, longer hook times, and the midwitch changes, they will need to be playtested, and I will cover them all in the second part of the video. But if I could say anything about them, give whoever thought of removing the breakable walls on the bathroom stairs a gold star. It was a stupid thing to exist before, and with its removal, allows a much easier time to traverse the map for both roles. I don't think any change has made me this happy, Outside of when Nurse obtained the token system and made Comp Nurse players mad. See you all in part 2 when we learn what the new chapter has to offer for characters and perks.